Hey guys, Jean Cole here again. Um, time for a, another analog vlog. Uh, as promised, today we're going to talk about uh, Kodak Portra 400, uh, which I've been shooting with this camera here, the Yashica FR2. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but I thought I would just dive in and talk about Portra for a second. Um, my prognosis is in the last vlog was that it would probably be better, it would be sharper, uh, better colors. Uh, surprisingly, um, that didn't turn out like I thought it would. Uh, when it comes to sharpness, it's about the same as Superior 200, um, which was a little disappointing. I thought it would be sharper. Um, I guess if I were to choose between the two, then I would use Portra uh, obviously for portraits. Why? Because it's got a little bit of a creamy uh, tint to it. And colors are creamier than um, let's say the Fuji 200, which, um, which can look quite good, especially with portraits, makes it a little bit, I don't know, softer. Uh, it's, it also has um, a bit of a yellow tint to it. So it means that um, it's great for skin tones um, and I think that Portra performs uh, particularly well when things are well lit. So when the, shine, the sun is shining, it'll look good. If a subject is well lit, um, it, it will look good. Um, but most of the photos I took were on uh, cloudy days because it's autumn over here. And um, I don't know, the yellow tent bugged me a bit. So I tended to um, uh, make the photo a little bit cooler when in post-processing. Um, but the photos that I did take in a direct sunlight looked really good. Um, when it comes to dynamic range, I think it doesn't... Um, when it comes to dynamic range, it's not that different from Superior. I don't think both of those types of film have really great dynamic range, but it's not bad. Um, I think if you use it and it's correct, uh, in the correct setting, I think that you can get um, the best out of it. I think that Superior is great for um, everyday snapshots. It's it's even killed. It's well balanced, um, and I think with Portra, um, I don't think I would do landscapes unless it's sunny, um, and you know mostly portraits and you know sunny photos outside. But um, I don't know. With portrait, you can overexpose quite a bit, and I found that the skies, especially, were they weren't blown out, but they were there was there wasn't a lot of detail. I had to bring the the highlights back quite a bit. Um, so I think for landscapey type of things, I would I would prefer Superior. Um, of course, there are better films out there for stuff like that, especially if you want punchier colors, which I do. Um, I think probably. Um, Kodak Ektar would be better for that I think I haven't tried it yet and I think that something like um, Fuji uh, Velvia would be really good although I think you can only get that in slide film these days I'm not sure but um, there aren't a lot available in Holland these days but I do have a Fuji X100S and that has JPEG uh, format files that have you can you can set um, color pro profiles and in the case of the Fuji you can set the profiles of the film that Fuji makes um, among which is Velvia so I might try that out and see how that works. I shot it on the Yashica FR2 which is kind of the same camera as the FR1 that I used uh, last time only this one uh, does aperture priority mode whereas the other one is uh, all manual meaning that um, you can set the aperture and then it will give you a reading of what the um, of what the hold on a second meaning that you can just set the aperture and then it will give you a reading of what the shutter speed will be and then you can adjust accordingly um, that's about it it still has a light meter which I don't know. I mean, the Canon that I have, the AV1, is from the same year, and it has the half press 
to take a, a reading. Um, so I think, you know, this is kind of irritating. Um, I guess it's better than, you know, like something like the Canonet that has um, the light meter up here, meaning that if you don't have a lens cap on, the battery runs out. So, um, you know, it's a little bit better, but I think, you know, for a camera such as this, you would have expected um, less of a hassle. But anyways, the camera's good. It's, it, take good, it takes good photos. It's got a good lens as well. This one's a, a 50 millimeter, 55 mil, millimeter F2. So you can, you can do a lot with it. And um, I think I shot, I shot the Porter 400 on 320, ISO 320. So I overexposed it by almost half a stop. So not really much difference. So you would definitely expect this, the, the highlights not to be as blown out as it was. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, I'll show you some of the highlights of uh, the photos I took with the Portra. Uh, I will show you the, uh, the photos as is. And if you want to see what I did in uh, post-production, and also the other photos that I took then um, you can check out my Instagram which is at bright and grainy and if you type in the hashtag uh, JKV Portra 400 then you'll see all of those photos uh, I hope you enjoy I hope this has helped you out uh, next time I can either do a review of uh, Ilford HP 5 black and white film or we can talk about the Konica C35 EF. So um, let me know in the comments which one you would like to see first. Um, this is kind of a cool camera. Some famous people use it. We'll talk about that next time. And um, enjoy. <laughs>